Good afternoon, everyone. Good to be back on stage. What's up, and, Slash? <laughs> and uh, I'm really pleased to be here uh, having a conversation with, with uh, Robert, who I think is one of the most interesting founders of, in Europe. And why do I think that? Well, a few reasons. One is that he's actually building a company that is becoming a global uh, winner or a global leader in your category, a global communications company. And the two things that is close to my heart here, or three things, is, is a global communications company. Communication is something I have a background on. And the other thing I think is very, very cool, personally for me, is that you're from Amsterdam. And that's what I started my first company in 2000. Kaza was in two, I started in, 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 in Amsterdam, and I used to have great memories from, from there. So well, I was a ask, power user back then. Yeah. <laughs> You, put the, you, you gave us a lot of problems. <laughs> Sorry. Yeah. <laughs> so what Robert is doing, another thing that we, as an investor, what we like about this company is uh, that he has uh, $100 million in annual run rate uh, with profitability. And the company has been almost doubling, or actually been more than doubling, revenue every year. So it's uh, a massive company and growing really well. It's also a global company in terms of your reach. Uh, so what they do is, is a cloud communication uh, service. Uh, but Robert talked more about that. It's a global company. You're signing up customers all around the world. And so needless to say, uh, at Atomico, we were extremely pleased that we were invited to, to become an investor in your company earlier on this year when you took, took in financing for the first time. And we did that together with our good friends at Excel. So um, let's hear it from, from Robert. Um, tell me from, you know, how you started, you know, you, you, how did you start this company? I know that you were doing something different before this. Well, tell us the story, how it all came about. Yeah, so I was basically working at my previous company, Zaypay, um, which was an API to pay for virtual goods on your mobile phone bill. Um, back then, carriers were going to become payment companies, and, and, you know, we were sort of, we were integrating with carriers in order to provide these payments. And we wanted to verify user's phone number with a text message. And it was very crucial to our business that we were able that that message would arrive, because otherwise we couldn't verify the user and we couldn't process the payment. And we used this vendor um, that was the market leader back then. And basically, messages wouldn't arrive. They would arrive late. We would lose conversions. And it was one big mess. So we integrated with KPN. Which I'm from Amsterdam. So it's a Dutch carrier. Um, they had owned back then Opcos throughout Europe and Germany, France, and Spain, integrated with them built it ourselves, and basically took the business away from our vendor. And the most interesting thing that happened was that a couple weeks later, uh, the account manager calls us and is like, hey, what happened to the business that you were sending us? And as I was complaining about how shit their service was, um, they were like, well, if your service is so much better, why don't you supply it to us? And that was the first time that I realized that there was like a, a aggregation business that, that we, could, we did something that they didn't have because they didn't integrate directly with the carrier. They were using another supplier that was using another supplier, which is you know, the fundamentals of communications, why some of it's broken. Um, so made kind of the contrarian decision back then. We got an offer to sell the, the company. Um, we ended up selling it. Um, and we, we went into this like messaging business. And back then, everybody thought SMS was going to die because of you know, Facebook, WhatsApp. Um, but I just fell in love with the product and, and the way that it worked technically. Um, there wasn't some, you know, I was yeah. more luck than anything else, yeah. but it, it turned out okay. Yeah. And what's really interesting also, uh, one thing I got very impressed with when we looked at your company was that you guys, you built your whole technology stack in-house, which is pretty complicated because it's actually a Signaling 7 uh, communication stack, which is, you know, you have big companies like Ericsson, Nokia, and others doing that, but you guys just did it. And what's interesting here is something that reminds me of when we built Skype, because we kind of did the same thing. And, and, and then, of course, you ask yourself, why, why do you build your own technology instead of kind of going out and, and procuring it from others? I mean, for us, it just, it just seemed like the most logical thing to do. It was kind of the same way that we looked at integrating with carriers directly, which seemed like a logical thing to do, and, and, it, and nobody else was doing it. Um, and it was the same that I, I think if you want to innovate in and if you want to innovate in communications in our space, if you want to innovate in technology, you need to own the lowest level infrastructure. And so, to build our own SS7 stack was like something that 
made a lot of sense to us. Yeah. Um, I, I don't even think I realized when we started building it that nobody else had ever done it before. No. Uh, it, that was just more something we, yeah. but we just did it yeah. and, and it worked out. You didn't out. ask if it was too difficult, you just did it. Yeah, we just, we yeah. just and you know, a lot of stuff went wrong yeah. at the beginning, but it ended up, uh, And is that something it. to do with your t-shirt that you're wearing? Yeah, we got shit done. <laughs> Can you see it? Oh, you can't see it, but. No. So, uh, let's turn to Amsterdam. Um, I'm sure, I hope that some of you guys have seen the report that we launched today, the State European Tech um, 2017. And one of the things we're highlighting is that it's no longer about a few tech hubs that where technology is happening in Europe. As a matter of fact, we think that every city is becoming a tech city. And I think MessageBird is a great example that places like Amsterdam is also now really on the map as well for, for technology. So, Robert, tell me what's happening in, in Amsterdam in terms of startup ecosystem, and is there, is there a lot of companies, are there angel investors, are there events, what's, what's happening? I mean, I have to be really honest that for me, I'm, I'm, you know, I, I, try to, I try to not go to a lot of events and, and try to focus on building the business. I think if you, if you focus a lot on going to events, then you're probably not building something really good. Yeah. Um, so I have a little bit of a skeptical view uh, on that, but you know, you know, I think the tech scene in Amsterdam is good. We have, you know, obviously booking, a company like Adyen, payments company, comp you know, competitor to Stripe, uh, worth a couple billion. Uh, I think that's a really good example of, of like a Dutch founded company that stayed in Amsterdam. All, like 80% of their employees are there. We transfer as a Dutch company. There's a lot of cool tech, yeah. you know, coming, coming out of Amsterdam. Um, but we could be doing more. Yeah. Of course, you have booking.com, which is a giant yeah. as well. Yeah. So there, there's, there's been some, some, some big successes. And Talking about that, um, what about talent? Is that, you know, obviously you have a very talented tech team because you build some very uh, challenging technology. Has that been, is that, is that um, have you recruited everyone locally or did you get people from abroad? How many people are you today, by the way? We're about 100 people today. Yeah. Um, well, if there's any engineers that need a job, they're welcome. So, and you know, finding engineering talent is always hard. I think for any, any place in the world, it's hard in Amsterdam as well. We always took a deliberate decision to not uh, use any recruiter. So we've, we're very proud that we've never used a recruiter um, in the history of MessageBird. Uh, we, do a, we do a lot of our own events. We do this event, IPAs and APIs, where we just invite people to come have beers with us. Um, there's, there's no structure, there's no speeches, there's no, you know, uh, people just come to our office and have beers. It's been good for recruiting because you know people do, we we get to show like what we actually do. It, another thing is we you know our company's growing so fast and it's quite technically challenging that a lot of engineers just like working for us because they have it's a real challenge. Yeah. Um, but yeah, we can we How can always use more. How much time do you spend personally on recruitment? Um, yeah, more than fifty percent of my time these days. Fifty percent. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, That's talents. You know, obviously, it started out with a couple people doing most of the work. Yeah. These days, you know, it's the team that makes the company. Yeah. It's not an individual. And the reality is also um, a lot of time for a founder has to, that you have to spend a lot of time doing that. Yeah, it's the number one, it's the number one thing that's important is yeah. actually if you have a really great team, I think somehow you will figure out a way to be successful. Yeah. Um, and, and I think if you scale really, really quickly and you don't have the foundations yeah. properly set, then it's a recipe for disaster. Yeah. So at Atomico, you know, of course we're, we're thrilled about business models, about technology, but at the end of the day, it's about founders. It's, it's the founders who really make things happen. And there are certain characteristics that you need to have. You need to have that really determination to win at any price and, and to have, you know, want to build a, something that is a winning model, a winning business that can, can stand the test of time. And w one, one point I really enjoyed when, when we had a conversation early on this year was uh, when you told me the story about when you guys had an acquisition offer uh, that could have been potentially life-changing for you financially, you could have made a lot of money. Because the other thing that didn't say was that uh, um, you guys had no investors. So you, basically, you and the team had uh, owned the company, so... Yeah, we bootstrapped, our we cap bootstrapped. table was clean, there was so, so no that, outside So that could capital. have been a pretty life-changing event. So tell, tell, why don't you tell us a little bit what happened and what was the outcome? 
I mean, it's a little, of a, a little bit of a confronting question. Um, but you know, we're, we're, we're among, <laughs> among friends here. OK. So I mean, look, I don't think that you, as a founder, you should try to build something that has impact, that, that gets you up in the morning. You know, I've never woken up in the morning and didn't want to, go to, didn't want to go to work. So I think that's the most important thing. So when co somebody comes with an acquisition offer, the, I think the questions you should ask yourself is, are you tired? Like, are you, are, are you done with, with work, which I wasn't? Um, you know, is, is, your, is your market going down a drain? Do you see something coming up that you think, you know, if I get out now, then like, you know, I've, I've done really well. And it, that also wasn't the case. So I didn't really, I didn't really want to sell. That being said, you know, I remember they invited us over. We obviously knew what, what the conversation was going to be. You know, when Corp Dev and, and founders of other big companies start inviting you over, you kind of know what the, what the question is going to be. I mean, it all starts with like, we want to have a strategic discussion with you and see how we could partner together. Yeah. But you kind of know what it's about. And then I remember they, they wrote down, they were like, they wrote down a number on the board. And, it, you know, I, I won't say what the number was, but I, I remember just keeping a straight face, trying to not like think, you know, this is a dream. This is like, yeah. you know, this is not normal. But then again, looking, you know, a couple weeks passed and, and, and we, we entertained the discussions. And then at some point it just didn't feel right. We, we, we seriously considered it. It didn't feel right. I can't explain exactly one thing what it was, yeah. but we just weren't done building and I, I remember walking into their office and thinking like so this is going to be my job like i'm going to have to go here and have lunch here and be here and i just didn't you see could myself just quit doing it and enjoy your money though you could you know you could uh, be the king in the nightclubs you, you know you yeah, could have a nice so... apartment big car yeah but does, does that make you happy i don't know i've seen a lot of people I, I mean i've been in san francisco a lot in the past two years there's obviously a lot of people that have made a lot of money there every single founder has basically told me that they wish they kept their business. So, I don't know, for me that wasn't, we made that decision, yeah. which was, you know, uh, how, the future how, how will tell me that? if I was stupid or not. Yeah. So when you made that decision. About a year, it's actually this week, almost, I think it's actually this week exactly a year ago. All right, and you look happy. Uh, so tell me, so <laughs> oh. when you made that decision, how did, how did you, did you do that, to, you know, with the team? What did you tell the team? And what, yeah, how, how no. did, it, did it change your team? I did, mean, it wasn't, did, did it I mean, this wasn't, culture? this wasn't my, I mean, I, I never felt it was honestly just my decision. Um, you know, we had a, I founded the company with a founding team from like a structural level, I guess it was my decision, but like, mm. you know, this was, this was a team. I, honestly, if they, if, if some of the other guys on my team would have said, we really want this, you know, I, I don't have a family, they had families, I probably would have done it because... I, you know, I just, I, I don't feel this, is an, this was an individual decision. But the coolest thing was that I remember I had the conversation basically saying, guys, I don't think we should do this. And uh, then I had the conversation that I just told them, sorry, we're not going to do this, the, 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 the acquiring company. Um, and the next day, it was on a Sunday, we had the conversation on Saturday, and on a Sunday, we had like a, a call, there was like five people in the call, and they were like, you know what, Robert, fuck it, let's kill him, and we'll be the one buying them in five years. And... You know, that, that I probably will never forget that moment ever. And did you, your ambition level, did you, did you kind of elevate your ambition level and... and uh, yeah, I mean, that was, that? that was the moment that we, I mean, we bootstrapped for, for six years. That was yeah. the moment that we really decided like, yeah. okay, if we really want to have an impact in the world, if we really, you know, if we're serious about, you can say jokingly, okay, I'm going to kill my competition or I'm going to buy my competition. Yeah. But what if you honestly mean it? And then what are the steps that you need to take to get there? What's yeah. the scale that you need to get at? Um, what's the help that you need? So for us, we were profitable. It wasn't just about the money. It was more about, you know, what, the help, you know, working with, with yeah. you guys. You, you guys have all been operators, entrepreneurs yourself. You know, how did, how did you yeah. do it? Uh, for us, working with Excel, you know, just amazing investors. You know, how, uh, what's the, what have they seen work? What have they not seen work? Yeah, um, yeah that was probably the, the moment that I decided, okay, now we're just going to go all in. Yeah, so that's also when you actually decided, actually, I should take in investors because you didn't have a board, you had no one to, you know. You, My board meetings were so lonely, I would sit in front of a mirror, have, a, have like a nice whiskey Coke and yeah. just have a conversation with myself. Yeah, giving yourself a nice self-assessment. Yeah. <laughs> but it's, it's interesting because for many entrepreneurs, it's almost a dream scenario. You, you, you own, you, you know, you have a profitable company, you don't have a board, you're not accountable to anyone and you can do whatever you want. But instead, you went out to seek out uh, uh, venture capital investors, 
And uh, now you have a, you, you told me you had a four hour board meeting yesterday and my and, first and real, real board. I mean, had one before, but it was a trial one. This was my yeah. first real board meeting. Yeah. So what, what was, what, what, you know, what, 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 so why did you want, why did you decide to take in investors and, and what did you look for at, you know, at, with investors? Um, I mean, I'll start with what we looked for. I mean, we, we were fortunate enough that we, we had people knocking down the door for a while. So, so yeah. we were, so we, I mean, we just ran a, I mean, we ran, I asked advice from other founders what we should do, and we ran a competitive process. We, we invited, we made a deck, we invited 10 of the best venture capitalists to, to have conversations with. It starts with a coffee. We basically eliminated the first couple uh, straight away. Um, you know, then we went through the process. It all went really, really quickly. I mean, I think from the first coffee with Excel to term sheet was eight days. I think it was similar to Atomico. Um, but I kind of knew when I walked in, it, it was, it was, you know, it's it's kind of like if you, if you if you meet your girlfriend or your wife, and you know there can be a hundred girls in the room or, or guys for for the girls, but it's the one that you like. And why do you like that person? It doesn't have to be the best good-looking one or the smartest one. It's just something about it. And it was the same. We were not the best-looking investors. I, I, <laughs> Come on, Robert. <laughs> <laughs> but it was just something about it just clicked. And I think it was also the conversations were very deep. Yeah. So there was a clear segment between investors that were like, just really wanted to jump on the ship and get on board. And, and both you and Excel had exactly the same mindset of like, okay, but so you've done this, but where do you need help? How can we help? Um, you know, what are we going to build? How's the company going to look like in five or 10 yeah. years? It's just an engaging conversation. Uh, and that's what we wanted. And, and you know, yeah. I, I, up until now, I feel super happy with the decision we made. Yeah. And now you're building a global business. So, how how is you know you have obviously you know you have business in and and reach in 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 uh, Asia, Latin America. Is that um, is that a challenge or how how do you think about scaling your business from here? I mean, scaling is you know. Hiring and scaling is what keeps me up at night. So it's like the two things. We're, we're lucky that the rest of the fundamentals of the business are good so far. The company's growing. Everything's good. Customers are happy. So, you know, it's really about like how do you? We're 100 people now. We hired about 41 people. 41 people since August. So that's quite quite a lot of people for us. And we spent six years, you know, yeah. gr growing from zero to the first 35 people. Uh, so it's. It's going quite quickly. So, so how do you scale that? What, what help do you need? What executive help do you need? You know, you don't, obviously, a lot of the people in our company are young, are super mm -hmm. talented, but are super young. You don't want to combine that with like really, let's say, I don't want to age discriminate, but let's say the old gray hair type people that everybody's yeah. afraid of. But it's also the reality that, you know, we're here, young, ambitious, talented. Mm -hmm. um, but if you want to grow the company to 500 or 1,000 people in, in, in a couple of years, then how do you do that? And your, your, mind, your challenges are completely different. The people that you have to hire, the skill set that you need to hire for is different. So you know, I don't have the answer. No. This is what we spent two hours at the board meeting talking yeah. about yesterday. Yeah. Uh, you know, half, I, half your time is, is, is recruitment. And it's, it's the most important thing, right, that you say, and that, that you need to be focused on and uh, continue to get the best people. Yeah, it's challenging. Awesome. Yeah. So a few takeaways here. We heard uh, coffee meetings and strategic meetings. So we know what that means. If you're having <laughs> a coffee, that means that your first meeting for actually pitching, and when there's a meeting about with uh, a strategic meeting, means that actually someone will buy you. And um, and and the golden rule when someone does, even if you want to sell the company, you should always say no. Yes. I mean, to be, to be honest, I, I did say no to the acquirer first, like, I think. But you probably thought times. maybe it's like, shit, I want to do this, right? I mean, maybe, because you thought about the money a little bit. Of course. No, I mean, you know, I, I, I won't deny I, I, I looked at the type of houses I could buy if I sold it. You yeah. know, it's just, you know. They're probably going to still be around in Amsterdam for a while, those houses. I, uh, I don't. I'm, I'm, I'm fine with where I live. Yeah. Also, well, Robert, thank you very much. Enjoy thank you. discussing with you, and uh, congrats. Thank you so much. Thanks.